This Corcon video is going to explore the settings needed to set up your Corcon and prepare for the integration to QuickBooks Online. This is the second in a series of four videos on the subject. In the first video, we discussed the settings necessary in QuickBooks Online to prepare for this integration. In this training video, we're going to look at the settings on the Corcon side in preparing to create the sync preferences in the Corcon link to QuickBooks Online. It's important to review the, the videos in order. The first video covered a lot of the information that is going to be referred to in summary in this training video. The Corcon link to QuickBooks Online allows you to sync and import company, customer companies, vendor, supplier, and subcontractor companies, and employees. The information in these types of records are synced in both directions. There are also transactions that export from Corcon to QuickBooks, which is a one-way export. Such things as labor time card hours, credit cards, debit cards, checks, prime invoices or progress billings, vendor bills, and sub invoices. The first training video also encouraged you to review the different job cost code linking options. These relate to the job cost only and the information and the level of detail that these export to QuickBooks Online. The previous training video encouraged everyone to discuss these with your accounting, bookkeeping, and other finance team members, as well as anyone reading executive level reports that are generated out of QuickBooks Online. Several of these job cost code linking options are affected by Corcon's global settings. Back to Corcon. Before we go to the global settings, there's a couple transaction or record types that we want to talk about so that you understand what these settings will affect. Let's start with the HR module and go into active employees and we'll select one employee. If you're importing labor time cards, remember to go to global settings and set up the different pay items. You may also wanna go ahead while you're at that and set up the hourly base rate and burden rates for each of those in each employee's profile. Next, we'll jump up to projects. I'm going to select a single project and go down to procurement and to bills. And let's open the bill detail. Vendor bills can be entered in several ways. Vendor bills can also be used to record other transaction types. For example, Corcon recommends that you enter debit cards, credit cards, and employee reimbursement expenses as a miscellaneous expense, which is a feature found in HR. But you can also use vendor bills in Corcon under the procurement module to enter such the same sort of things. So when you would enter a bill, if it were for a corporate credit card or an equipment supplier invoice or other types, you can select that and it will affect how that exports to QuickBooks Online. If you plan to do this, you're going to want to set these up, and I will show you how to do that in a few minutes. Let's go back out to the project home, and let's jump back down to HR. When entering a miscellaneous expense, the header part of the record is going to ask you whether the reimbursement is going to be to employee or to a vendor. If it were to employee, it means that it's going to be reimbursement. If it's set to vendor, it means that you're going to have to select payee company. The part that we need to discuss is the payment type. This also controls how information is exported to QuickBooks Online. And when we get to the sync preferences and setting those up in the next video, we'll show how those can affect and the offsetting entry in QuickBooks Online. For example, a corporate credit card would be a debit to cost of goods sold. The credit side of the entry, however, would be a credit card liability account. And by setting those here, 
we can control where that information is going to go. So examples of payee types for miscellaneous expense would be corporate issued debit cards, corporate issued credit cards, employer reimbursements, and so on. Now let's go to global settings. To do that, it's the gray gear icon at the top right hand corner of your screen. And some of this information was covered in the previous video, but we'll review. First, we'll go to company settings and then to global settings. You'll want to make sure that you change the transaction locking to locked. This prevents information once exported to QuickBooks from being edited or changed in Corecom. Remember that for the security roles that are assigned to users, only the administrator and the financial administrator will have access to and be able to manage the Corecom link to QuickBooks Online. We jump down to payment terms. There are already some payment terms entered for you created by Corcon. These do control the due dates that will appear on the QuickBooks side of the Corcon link bridge. There are also additional ones that will calculate. If you go to a knowledge base article called payment terms, there's some others you can add and customize this list for yourself. If your sales tax is already set up in QuickBooks Online, this information will import into Corcon through the Corcon link in one of the steps we'll use to set up that Corcon link to QuickBooks Online. Cost codes are important in one case because one of the options is to export cost-related transactions first to cost code and then to the master cost code list at the division level and then finally to a service item in QuickBooks called CCUNC. Next we'll go down to feature settings and then down to procurement. If you scroll to the second section there are build types. Build types are used in the Corecon link to QuickBooks Online to determine the offsetting entry to certain types of bills entered. For the most part most bills entered in Corecon will have an offsetting entry to accounts payable. But other transaction types like corporate credit cards have a credit entry to credit card liability. You could also record transactions in, as bills for debit card transactions and if need be even the employee reimbursements, although Corcon recommends those to be recorded as miscellaneous expenses. Next we'll go to time and expenses and down to payroll items. Payroll items should be set up and each employee should have pay rates, cost, burden, and so on associated with these. If you plan on importing the hours from labor time cards into QuickBooks Online. Although it doesn't affect the import into QuickBooks Online, it's also a good idea to go ahead and set up your payroll burdens. If you scroll down a little bit farther, there's also workers' comp, and you can assign costs to those as well. Similar to the bill types, Workon also has something called miscellaneous expense payment types. These also affect the credit side of an entry. This is where usually you would record corporate issued credit cards, corporate issued debit cards, employee reimbursement payment types, and so on. Again, we'll use these to affect the credit side of the entry that makes it into QuickBooks Online after the export. Back to Corcon Home. And back to the job cost sync preferences options. Two of these options should also be considered before you set up Corcon Link to QuickBooks Online Sync Preferences. The one is the option to create service items in QuickBooks so that you can export by project classification. The other is the item Auto Link Service Items based on the job cost code exact match only. That's dealing with the job cost code number. If you're going to use the project classification method, you're going to want to go back to the global settings, to feature settings, and then lead in project. You're going to want to set up a new lead in project classification and then add the items under it. It's been suggested that you could use this to allocate cost on the QuickBooks Online side based on a division department group, a product line, or service instead of using job cost codes. If you do that, we encourage you to click add, create a new list. I've called mine 
profit center. Once it's here, and once you save it and it's here, when you click on it, you can start adding the different options that you want to see. Remember that each project needs to be tagged to only one of these, and it does need to have a tag for this to effectively export to QuickBooks Online. I chose by division or department within my company, but you can use these for a lot of other purposes. The other list that will affect the option to auto link service items based on job cost code is found under the company settings and cost codes. A master cost code list would be set up and at the division level, one of the options is to record the cost transaction based on the division code. These can also be seen if we go back out to a project, go to contract admin, and then to the job cost code table. If you don't already have these showing, just go to the column settings and check or uncheck those items that you're going to want to take a look at and click apply. The option we're talking about again is the auto link service item based on job cost code exact match only. The selection hierarchy that Corcon uses first looks for cost transactions at the job cost code level. A job cost code is project specific, so the number and the description can change from project to project. If Corcon can't find a match in the QuickBooks online service items, it'll then look at the division code, which comes from the master cost code list recorded in global settings under cost codes. A division level cost code is less detailed, more summarized than a job cost code. And back to Corcon Home. If you'd like to know more about the information covered in this training video, we encourage you to go to the knowledge base and down to the integration and public APIs, select accounting and ERP systems, and then QuickBooks Online. The information covered in this training video can be found in this overview article, especially the article titled Corcon Data Setup Recommendations.